Okay, well, hi everyone, and thank you very much for watching or listening. Liam Archer here today with another episode of Presenting Champions, and I'm joined today by the founder, owner, and creator of Spartan Bare Fight Club, Christian Roberts. Many people know Spartan is, uh, in my opinion, the most brutal fight club out there, but as I always say, it also saves a lot of lives as well, and uh, turns a lot of people's lives around. We'll get into that more later. Very, very exciting things happening with the brand. There's new people coming on board, there's new uh, branches opening up, there's big plans for future shows coming off an absolute barn burner with the last show as well, absolutely incredible. So there's a lot to talk about. Christian, thank you for coming on the show, mate, and it's uh, always a pleasure to catch up with you, to be honest. Always a pleasure to come on, Liam, always. Like I say in the game, you're the best in the game where bare knuckles concerned. There's very few I will give an interview or time to. Well, always an honour. And uh, as I said before, um, well, you know, before we started recording just now, I love the work you're doing because you're putting on the most brutal, exciting fights out there on the one hand. And on the other hand, you're touching people's lives, saving people's lives. The amount of guys I speak to, I know you open the door, they have to walk through the door. But at the end of the day, um, the way it turns people's lives around as well is absolutely incredible. So great work you're doing. Let's touch on the last show. Let's start there. Um, there's a lot to talk about with this show, but let's start with your reflections on how it all went, basically. Yeah, man. Um, Spartan 14, in my opinion, um, was the best to date. Um, not particularly action-wise. I mean, the fights were superb. Don't get me wrong. There were some bright barn burners in there. Some good knockouts and stuff, but more the atmosphere, the way it's growing now, and it's coming together like a family. The fans turn up, they can relate to the fighters, fighters relate to the fans. Just an all round good buzz, you know, and and the atmosphere the other week was was unrivaled. I've never seen it at another BKB company, and that's not me being biased. That's you know me being truthful. I've never I've been other shows and stuff, but this was second to none. And like I say, some of the fights were absolute crazy, man. Um, it just keeps getting better and better, man. And that's down to, like I say again, the, the huge support network we have from the fans who are the best in the game. No trouble again at our show. Um, and these fighters who put it on the line, man, I mean, watched it. Take some stones to get in there, man, and do what they do. But they did it again, you know, and they put it all on the line and they showed yet again why everyone's talking about it, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. And like I said, again, before we started recording, you know, as well as what you're doing, putting on the brutal fights, putting on top quality shows, saving lives as well. It really is a brotherhood. You know, I mean, you don't see respect among uh, fighters and fans and everybody involved like this anywhere else, really. I mean, as I said to you just now, um, even on social media, I see posts with um, fighters, you know, somebody's having a hard time or they're not going to the best time. They put up a post. Loads of other fighters are in there from, you know, other weight divisions, other areas, you know, they don't have anything to do with each other, but they all share the pit. What do you think has caused that, you know, your organisation to become such a tight knit family, such a brotherhood, such a, I think a family is the best word for it, really, because that is that is what it is, you know? Well, you know, you, you followed us for a long time, you know, and, and we've always, well, I've always encouraged that. You know, I didn't want to just uh, build a fight club where beefs are settled or we run an actual fight club and no one talks to each other. No. It's a sport, you know, and we all fight for the same promotion. So let's be there for one another, man. I mean, for them six minutes that you get in the pit or 10 minutes of it's a title fight, you know, you do what you need to do in them 10 minutes or six minutes, you know, but apart from that, let's help each other out, man. I mean, what, so some of the things people don't see are behind the scenes, fighters selling tickets for other fighters and not making any money just so they can pay the money and, play, and have the fight because they're struggling with the tickets. And that's what it's meant to be like. You know, that's, we're, we're meant to be all singing off the same MC. We're all under one promotion, you know. So if one Spartan's in trouble, every Spartan's in trouble. You know, if one Spartan's having a good day, we can all be happy they're having a good day, you know. But, but let's be there for one another, man. The world's tough enough without making enemies of the people you work with absolutely i love it man and that is the thing as i just really think that that bird mentioning you know what i mean because it is a, a powerful atmosphere you create now we'll in a minute we'll uh, talk a little bit more about the previous show and i uh, will talk about the future as well but before we do 
What is your honest opinion on this? Because we were, we were talking about this just now, about the way that Spartan um, saves people's lives. And what I mean by that is, like we were just talking about just now, when I speak to the lads, either one-on-one -on -one or interviews like this, the amount of stories from, you know, people being abused as kids, people being in prison, people coming back from addiction, mental health, um, you know, people who've been shot, stabbed, hit with hammers. I mean, God only knows what, all this type of thing. They'd be dead or they'd be in a really, really bad way, um, crippled or whatever or something if they weren't working with you. Now, like I said, I know that, that uh, you open the door, they have to walk through the door. But as well as the most brutal fights out there, this is the other beauty of Spartan, the way it saves lives. What are your thoughts on that, mate, to be honest? Because it's something you do. And when I speak to you one-on-one, -on -one, you're very humble about it. But I think this needs mentioning to the fans and to the fighters as well with the work that, that you do, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, I never take credit for anything to do with the saving the lives and stuff. You know, it's kind of everybody who gets in the pit has a reason to do so. You know, now whether that be addiction, self harm, you know, going to jail for fighting and satisfying your needs or whatever it is. You know, as you just touched on, we, we provide the platform and we open the door, but I couldn't be more proud of than every single person that we help because to get to that point where you can say you've been helped, you have to help yourself, you know. So I'm just glad that my real thoughts on it are long may it continue. You know, a lot of people think we're just about having real fights and other stuff in it. This shit's really saving people, man. It's really turning people's lives around them, you know, and and I'm proud to be a part of that. And you know, I'm proud to be overseeing it, if you will. Um, but I couldn't be more prouder than the boys that, that get the help because, you know, like I've touched on, they have to help themselves to get the help. So, you know, at that point, they've already decided to change their lives. And, you know, if we can keep doing that, we can keep changing lives and we can stop one parent burying a child or, you know, or, or stop one person taking a drugs overdose or, you know, it's a good thing, though. So, you know, we just got to keep pushing, man. I mean, I never really dwell on it. You know, I'm well aware of how many people inbox me and say, if it wasn't for you or if it wasn't for Spartan or, you know, and we get that. We really do get it. Um, yeah, man, it's a good thing. And, you know, and it makes me mega proud to know that, even if we've changed a couple of lives along the way, then we've done what we set out to do. Absolutely, man. And this is the thing, like I said to you um, early on just now, I mean, before we started recording, this is, for me, it's always the two sides of it, the most brutal, exciting fights that there are. Uh, and don't get me wrong, I mean, there's fights out there that go longer, there's fights out there that are more technical, there's other things, but the brutality and the toughness that you have to have and the balls you have to have like balls of steel like i always say to get in the pit it's not like anything else so there's that side of it but then there's the saving life so i'm glad we mentioned that from the last show as well um before we started uh recording you were telling me a little bit about the ethan mitchell and the chris higgins fight now it's not to pick favorites because everybody who gets in the pit deserves that respect but you were pretty much telling me it's one of the most uh, brutal and toughest fights you've ever seen so let's just talk about that for a minute as well give that a quick mention please mate well yeah um shout out to chris higgins and um ethan mitchell you know, Chris had only had one fight for us before Ethan was having his first fight. I mean, what a fight. Um, you know when you've matched a good fight because you can hear the crowd behind you gasping. Um, these boys put it all on the line, man. I mean, they, they were punch for punch. It was, like I said to you off camera, you know, the, there's only a handful of fights ever in my BKB, you know, following that I've fringed that, and that was one. You know, Stevie Gold was another one when he fought, I can't remember the guy's name from Birmingham, the Bull. Um, I can't remember his name, it eludes me now, but St him and Stevie Gold, that were live. I walked away from the ring at the side of the ring after it was covered in blood. You know, so that, that's when you know you've had a good one. Robbie Adamson and Jacob Williams was another, you know, but I could name but three or four in my whole 12 or 13 years of being involved, you know, and that was right up there, man. So, yeah, definitely take a bow, those two. They are two tough individuals. Absolutely, 100%. I mean, like I said before, big respect to everybody who gets in the pit in any way, shape or form, because it's as tough as 
as it comes. But yeah, I mean, I saw you mention on social media that one was sort of a highlight and everything. So good to give that a mention. Another thing, how do you uh, cope with your workload? Because obviously you're always matching um, fighters and setting up the shows and you obviously love it. So don't get me wrong, but it's a lot for people to take on board. And you're like a machine, man. You're like an absolute machine with um, your workload of uh, setting up the fight card and doing everything you're doing. How do you pace yourself and, and, and manage that side of things on a, just on a personal level now? Um, every day is a school day. So, you know, I'm still learning to proportion my time and stuff. And, you know, as we touched on before, I think a bit a big key to it as well to keeping longevity and vitality for what you do is having that little bit of time for yourself each day. You know, and that's something I've only learned recently, you know. Um, the other companies around me, BKBTM, it's, you know, bad to the bone. Name any of them. They all have a 20, 30 man team. You know, I've just done the last show with just my friend Kevin uh, and a couple of people who turned up on the day to help, but basically no team. You know, so a show that I can do without what I can do with. So, but that doesn't detract. You've seen lately I've been announcing different people in different roles. So we're starting to spread the workload a little bit now. It's starting to become effective. It's starting to become a business, you know. And um, yeah, man, it's a lot of work. Um, but as we touched on before, we're saving lives here sometimes and stopping people from doing silly shit. So if I have to work 80 hour weeks to, to save one, then that's what I'll do. Absolutely. I mean, like I say, obviously we're talking about the brand and we'll talk about everything with the future, but I wanted to hone in on just you personally for a minute to give you the recognition um, that you deserve for what you're doing because you're a very humble person, but uh, you, know, you, you deserve that respect for... Um, the work that you're putting in day after day, week after week and everything. And it's, it's amazing. Talk to us about other people coming on board as well, because one of the things we need to touch on here, um, which, you know, I was planning to get to sooner, but we had a few other topics. Um, obviously, we've got some great people coming on board to open their own branches, um, to grow the brand and to uh, effectively take over parts of it. And these people, the two that you have announced are, great, great fighters in their own right, um, in their own careers. Um, let's talk a little bit about that and and tell every, anybody who doesn't know what's happening with that side of things. Yeah, so we announced recently, firstly, that Alex Reed, former cage fighter, will come in and do cage wars, the Spartan cage wars. I'm a firm believer that if someone's going to run a branch and they're going to run it effectively, they've got to have some experience in it. Got to have fought themselves. You know, got to have um, put the hours in, really. Uh, we feel he's well qualified to do so. He's still very much liked. He's very much a public figure. Um, when I sat down and spoke to him, a really nice dude, you know, and he's got the same vision as me for Spartan Cage was. You know, he wants to make it as big and successful as possible. So I believe he'll do that. You know, he, he needs the right break. He needs the right time, and it's now, you know, so... There'll be more coming from Alex uh, in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I know he's just had twin boys, so congratulations to Alex and partner Nick um, on the birth of your twin boys. And, you know, big shout out. Um, and the other guy, Charles Shepard, former IBO world featherweight champion in boxing, uh, quickest winner of a Lonsdale belt, world record holder for squat thrusts, press up, you name it. This guy's a talented individual, man. He's still got the hunger now he had when he was champion. You know, and having spoken to Charles for only less than an hour on the phone when we first started chatting about it, his vitality to succeed is crazy. It's crazier than mine. Um, and I really want to succeed, you know, but this guy, this guy's got no limits, man. He, he's he's really 100 mile an hour at it. So, yeah, I'll be picking up with Charles next week and I expect to get a few things down and sorted out. And, yeah, yeah. Um, Spartan Ring Wars Cumbria will be born, you know, and um, I really believe those two characters will have the gumption to, to push forward, grow the brand, uh, grow it where they are, bring more fighters to the table. You know, th these boys have been really carefully selected. They were my first choice, not my second or my third. They were my first choice. You know, I told you off camera about another guy who's thinking about it. Um, you know, hopefully I'll speak to him in the coming days and Hopefully we can get him announced. Hopefully, with fingers crossed, we get him on board. And I really believe, along with Nathan Dixon, Dale Matthew, 
Uh, and the other people, I've still got a name, the run out of uh, New Bloods, but that's going to be in the Doncaster area. So that'll give big clues away. Um, but yeah, I really believe with, with what we're doing, we're pushing the brand in the right direction. I really believe we're creating more opportunities for more people to fight more often. You know, in an array of uh, arenas with the cage, the pit and the ring. You know, so yeah, I mean, it's been a busy time, man, and it's exciting times ahead for Spartan, but all hard work that's in the pan ready to be done. Absolutely. Well, you know, the brand is going up and up in uh, every way, you know, I mean, this is the thing, even um, the quality of the shows getting better and better every time, uh, obviously the venue that you've now got as well, top class. I mean, there's so many things happening. Absolutely brilliant. Now, I also want to give a quick mention to um, the documentary that's in the works as well. Um, been ongoing for a few months, I believe, with filming being done and work being put together with that. Um, I don't know how much you can say about this at the moment, but can you tell us a little bit about what's happening with that side of things, mate, as well? Yeah, man. Um, documentary team come on board. Um, you know, one of the guys works for BBC One. He's just been doing a programme where he films people in the back of ambulances when they ring for an ambulance and stuff like that. So, he, you know, strangers to TV and stuff. And they've been working with us a good few months now. And they've been going around meeting the fighters personally at the homes and interviewing them in their everyday lives. And they come to the gym and did a bit with me, you know, and not sure how that's going to look. But, yeah, they, they come and done a bit with me. And, yeah, we had a good chat. And a really nice couple of guys. Um can't say too much about TV and stuff at the moment, but we know that it's it's going to be on TV. Um, yeah, man, I, I spoke to him yesterday and his words were, some of the stuff we've recorded, mate, it's absolutely crazy. He said, it's crazy. He said, it's nothing short of spectacular. So, you know, and, and I put a little bit of a, a teaser out from the documentary the other week on Facebook. Uh, there was a bit of a clip there and that. And, it gives you more of an insight into the fighters' lives, why they do what they do, you know, what it gives them, what they take from it. And that's very important to me. Very, very important to me that I understand what they take from this. Um, but basically, you know, like documentaries before that have been on Netflix and other ones that have been on it, it's not going to be all about the promoter. It's about the fighters and their lives, man, because they're the people that provide the entertainment. And they're the people that turn up and do what they do. I'm in a fortunate position where I get to steer the ship. You know, but I can I can I can tell you now it's all about these boys. This documentary was meant to be more about me as well. But I forfeited that because I don't feel like I deserve to be the, at the forefront. You know, as you as you touched on before, I'm always humble because I'm well aware of what they give to me. You know, and I just want to give back, you know. So yeah, it's about their lives and why they do what they do and how they come out of fights and what they do to prepare for everything about them because these boys deserve every bit of recognition they get because believe me now, they are doing the toughest form of their knuckle out there today. Absolutely. Well, I love that, man. I love how that's being represented from the sound of it in, um, as you say, getting into the insight of fighters as people, um, not just as fighters, if that, not just as tough individuals who, you know, punch lumps out of each other, but going a bit deeper into what makes them tick. I love that. I mean, as you know, it's what I try and do with interviews as well, is show the sides that people don't see. Um, so that sounds like it's going to be very, very cool. Um, absolutely. So moving into a couple of other things as well with future plans. I mean, you've got a lot going on with future shows um, because obviously um the different branches opening up we've touched on that but you've got the youtube wars side of it you've got other shows coming up so um it's quite a big question but talk to us a little bit about the future um in that sense in terms of what's what's coming up in terms of shows i don't mind how far ahead you want to go how close you want to go to the present i mean that's up to you but just it's a big question i know but just uh, a little bit about what's coming next mate you know i think i'd fry your brain if it went as far ahead as i am um I think you are all ready to watch Spartan Fight Fest 4, which I think I'm on Fight Fest 6 now, two years on. But yeah, um, no, yeah, YouTube Wars is a company I've created with Simon Kirk. We have our first show on uh, July 29th this, this this month in Bradford Hotel. It'll be Ring BKB in a smallish ring. Um, got that on the 29th. Then we've got Fight Fest on September. 
I expect Nathan Dixon, I expect Dale Matthew, and I expect Charles Shepard, and I expect Alex Reed to all have shows before the end of the year. You know, once we've got them out of the way, we can reset for next year, do a proper planner, you know, and get these 24 shows a year off, which will be which will be two every month, you know, and, and that's what I expect from this company. You know, it's been built to give the opportunity to more fighters up and down the country for different disciplines, for, you know, all skill sets. And that's what we're about, you know, giving people chances. So, you know, I've, I won't go further than this year, but all I'll say is, we expect another four to six, maybe seven shows before the end of this year. Absolutely incredible, man. I mean, it's gaining the momentum now as well. Um, you know how it goes. I mean, you've been pushing and pushing, um, and hopefully you've pushed that that boulder over the hill now, and it's uh, starting to roll. Um, I don't want to say on its own, but it's starting to roll with you know these other people um, putting their contribution in. So that is good news as well. Getting bigger and bigger all the time. Um, I get the feeling to touch on medical care as well and I wouldn't usually ask about this but because you're expanding the brand and people are going to be hearing about this who've not heard about it before if you get what I mean Spartan's going to be reaching new fans new fighters new faces um it is the most brutal out there but fighter safety is paramount to you for political reasons um including other promoters I'm mentioning this Talk to us a little bit about the, the fighter safety aspect, not to go too too far into that, but just to give it a quick mention, you know? Yeah, we, we, we've decided to upgrade the medical team. Um, you know, and that's not to say anything about the ones we had before, but these are just worlds apart. Um, we've, we've kind of sat down and figured out that, you know, it, it's not just like sloppy fighting in the pit anymore. We're getting athletes now. Some of these athletes are, are picking good punches and, and, and the, the injuries are getting a little bit more, you know. And, and so we decided to sit down with Chas Medical. Um, had a good word with Chris Say. Shout out to Chris Say, Chas Medical. He does, you know, he does the Welsh Combat League. He does everything, you know, he's all the way up and down the country. He's a second to none. He's got 30 years in the business, which is paramount. He can jump in the pit and stitch you there and then. You know, and these time saving procedures can change a fighter's life. So, you know, um, in this world, you get what you pay for. They cost a lot more money than you, our average medical team, which we had. But as you touched on, fighter safety is paramount. Um, you know, Chris is all professional. You know, he gives me an, an after show report, you know, and uh, it tells me what treatments we used and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. You know, um, it's well documented now that before the last show last week or the week before, someone rung the authorities before the show. So environmental health, the council, the police, um, health and safety, everyone come out. You know, and although we covered all the angles and we passed every test he gave us, you know, they were exceptionally impressed with Chris and his team. You know, the paramedic, the quick vehicle they had and everything was on point. You know, absolutely second to none. So... You know, like you say, uh, what price do you put on fighter safety? So, you know, massive shout out to Chris. It was his first show the other week. He was a in the fire because some of them fights were next level. Right? But, you know, he'd done a professional job all day, made the brilliant decisions. Um, and everyone went home safe to the loved ones. And, and that is what the end product is all about. Absolutely. Yeah, I just had a feeling to uh, to give that a mention, call it instinct, call it what you will, but it's very important to put it out there um, as the brand is expanding and everything because um, the shows are run on such a professional way. And I don't think everybody realises that, so it's good to give that a mention. You mentioned him as part of your team. Um, you mentioned earlier about the fact you're taking a lot of this on your own shoulders, but who else is helping you that you would like to thank and you'd like to give a little bit of a, of a shout out to? Because, again, with Spartan, you know, there is um, a lot of loyalty with certain people that you don't see. So, you know, there's people like, um, I don't know, Darren Wilson, say, for example, there's certain people who've just been around you for a long time um, who seem to just stick with you no matter what. And I know there are people who come and go. But at the same time with you, I've seen a lot of people who are very, very loyal to you personally and loyal to the brand. Um, who are some people, anyone else you'd like to give a quick mention to sort of helped you along the way so far, basically? Dean Lister, he's come on board now and he's going to be helping me out a lot more behind the scenes. Nathan Dixon, again, massive help all the time. Um, uh, Naomi, 
who does the merchandise. She is doing next level stuff, man. I, I, I haven't seen many better merchandise than what this girl can produce, you know, and she's absolutely smashing. It was sold out every week. So just goes to show you, you know, four years deep and it starts to work. Um, uh, well, six years deep starts to work. Um, so, yeah, all those type of people. My, my best friend who's recently come back into my life, Kevin Baldwin. Um, you know, we lost touch for 20 years, but like with any good friendship, you know, we come back in touch and just get back on the bike and ride, man. And I've got to tell you, if it wasn't for him on the last show, I'd have been in real trouble, you know. So, you know, I'm not naive to think it's all me because it's not <laughs> and it never will be. Um, but I appreciate the people around me, Scott Midsley, Ben Hatchett doing the commentary on pay-per-view, you know, uh, Ben Alcock, the, the ring announcer, you know, all brilliant, all jump in on the day and muscle in and help me, you know. Um, the list goes on, man. Uh, just, I could be here all night. You know, everyone, it's, it's always a team effort. You know, like I say, the planning of the shows and the building of the cards and stuff's all down to me. You know, but without them people around you on show day, it doesn't happen. It's that plain. So take a bow, every single one of you who helped, Dean, everyone, Kev, everyone, Scott, every single one of them. You know, you just, you know, my partner, every, everything, everybody helps, you know, uh, you know, I might be the brains where I'm doing the fight cards and matching and, and organizing, you know, medics and, and venue and blah, 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 blah. But on the day, if you haven't got enough hands, you know, you know, it's not happening. So massive shout out to them. And I'm certainly grateful I couldn't do it without them, guys. But mostly the fans, the, it's one of the, one of the top three proudest things that uh, is about Spartan for me is the fans. They're always impeccably behaved. You know, all right, there are no angels. Who is? You know, but we have no trouble at the shows. You know, might have the odd joint. <laughs> the police might come and tell me they can smell it. But apart from that, we've got some outstanding fans, man. They come, they cheer from start to finish. You've seen the atmosphere. They buy the merchandise, they drink the beer, and they go home happy. You know, and we couldn't be any prouder than our fans. Anymore. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, like I said before, the atmosphere that you create with the fighters, with the fans, with everybody gets a lot gets along. Um, I mean, it is amazing. I mean, even with, with such a high up saying electric, adrenaline, testosterone fueled environment, there's not the aggro. I mean, this is the thing. I mean, it's, it's absolutely uh, wild, but then it's testament to what you've put together in the team as well. And um, yeah, giving them a mention because obviously you're all in the in the same boat, you're in that together. But from everybody from the outside looking in, they're sort of behind the scenes in a way. So to obviously to give them the mention is uh, is top class. Um, we've talked about a lot of stuff. Is there anything else that we've missed uh, that you'd like to give a mention to um, that people would like to know about or have we pretty much covered everything from your point of view? I think we pre pretty much covered everything. Um, what's happening now. Uh, as for the future, like I say, it's not worth going beyond the year. You know, let, let's... You're only as good as your last show or your next show even. So, you know, I'm, I'm locked on to July 29th now, Spartan. Um, sorry, Spartan. YouTube Wars Chapter 1. Looking forward to that. My first ever tinkle at BKB in a ring. So I've always been a longstanding advocate of I'm more of a pit guy than a ring. But, you know, I, I, I respect the beauty of the ring game where skill, technicality comes into it and stuff rather than toughness and brutality. So, yeah, it'll be a welcome break, man, but I'm looking forward to that first one. And like I say, bringing the other people on board who we've mentioned beforehand. It's exciting times, man. It's exciting times to be a fan, a fighter, and mostly exciting for me just to be a part of it. Absolutely. Um, absolutely incredible. So the last couple of things, very briefly before we wrap this up, um, one of the things I have to ask is, uh, I've meant to ask this earlier, but you know what the YouTube was, is it going to be like a smaller ring, you know, like uh, like Ronda or like that type of style? Because I, I just want to talk about this, because I've also seen that you made a small adjustment in the pit as well, where you put like a different type of flooring or something. I saw the post on Facebook. I know it's a technical point, but I still think it'll interest the fighters. So we'll touch on that. One more thing after that, and then we'll we'll close out. But um, yeah, if you could explain a little bit about like what the ring is going to be and how the pit's been on. Well, it's undecided yet, but it's looking like it's going to be a twelve by twelve ring. So that's pretty smooth. Um, we want the action to be more like the pit, but as more controlled, as in skill wise and technicality. But we want you to be in a hurry doing it, man, because it breeds knockouts, you know. And, 
I don't like points wins and I don't like draws. So I can tell you now that I'm about to make an announcement this week. So this is an exclusive for here. That there will be no draws in YouTube Buzz. If there is a draw after three rounds, then an extra round will be sorted. Just like Gronda. Uh, it'll have no time limit, but a winner will be found. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, this is a thing. Fighters, you know, don't get paid for overtime. So, uh, you know, get the knockout. And, yeah, man, I mean, they're not being a draw thing, like you say, Gronda. Um, I mean, I know Lethway, they do that as well, don't they? With, um, oh, no, they do. Uh, actually, it's a draw if no, there's no knockout. But these type of things, that type of mentality, I love, because it just pushes people to give it their all, pushes people to give it their best um so i mean i know they give their best anyway when they fight for you they want to get their name out there it's kill or be killed but at the same time it pushes it that that extra mile which is why i was uh fascinated thank you love exclusives as well um and the last thing to uh to mention as well most people know this but i always put it in in our interviews fighters want to get in touch with you they want to get on the brand um how do they do that what do they need to do to sign up and get involved basically uh, well, you can find us on TikTok, Official Sparring and Fight Club 17. You can find me on Facebook, Christian Roberts, um, which will be the Sparring logo as my profile picture. You can find us on um, Insta. Uh, you can find the group, Official Sparring Fight Club, on, on Facebook. Any of those outlets, really, or find one of the fighters, find a post that's related to Spartan, and someone will direct you in the right direction. Absolutely. Well, yeah, because I'm just putting that out there because fighters out there uh, who are interested in this, thinking about being interested, I will say to people, now is the time because obviously, as everything we've talked about today, the brand is getting bigger and bigger, big names coming on board, top quality fights, everything about it. So, you know, people who want to make a name for themselves, anybody out there who's got balls of steel, wants to get in the pit, you, you know, contact this man, contact Christian. And uh, the same for the fans in the sense of, watching the shows, being part of the shows as well, getting bigger and better every time. So uh, now is the time to jump on board. Well, um, Christian, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure catching up with you. Uh, I don't think it's been that long since we since we last spoke, but the time's gone by in a flash uh, for myself personally. So it's really good to catch up with you and um, just thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for being an open book and uh, as well as the brand and everything. I know this is the opportunity um, for people to hear from you directly in this sense in terms of your thoughts your feelings your reflections and to give you the the respect that you you deserve as well you've got a lot of respect in the game but you're a very very humble man and you don't really put yourself out there in that sense you just get the job done uh with maximum efficiency so obviously then when we have a chance to talk like this it is a good chance for you to put yourself out there a little bit um which i think is is really good to do you know, now and again, and just for people to hear from you. So thank you so much for your time, mate. And uh, I've really enjoyed it. And I hope you have as well. Yeah, man, it's always a pleasure to come on and talk to you, mate. And, um, you know, love talking to you earlier about the family and everything else. Long may that continue along the up. Um, and yeah, man, I guess the next time we'll speak, we'll have had a few more in the book. Absolutely, yeah. We'll do an update. You know, there's some big things happening. So, you know me. Um, anytime you want to have a chat, you just let me know, and uh, we'll book something in and just keep updating people. Um, it works well. Um, I mean, end of this year, I think we've had a couple. I think this is maybe the third or the fourth or whatever. And just doing it every so often like that, keeping people updated. Absolutely brilliant. I'm happy with that. So, thank you very, very much, mate. Absolute pleasure. Um, well, good again, mate. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching um, please subscribe to the simply inspired youtube channel and there'll be more videos coming soon